Intense speed, great controls and profound style may be what's usually associated with the action sports genre, but they're not the most important factors. That in fact happens to be a diverse heart thumping soundtrack that truly defines this subgenre of games. From Stormzy's Pop Boy to Hero the Band's Shout, Dirt 5 is blessed with a profoundly catchy tracklist reminiscent of the 90s legends which paved the way. Games like Assassin's Creed and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 are the first games that came to mind after the first few hours with it. Regrettably however, Dirt 5 seems to only dip its toes in with the musical side of things while remaining reserved elsewhere. The game harkens back to an era of exceptional appreciation for exaggerated punk sensibilities which defined the 90s. Similar to SSX, we introduced a DJ of sorts via the game's Dirt podcast by Dirt Media. This pseudo DJ Atomica setup exudes similar energy to the titular character, albeit with their own bit of modern flair thanks to the talents of Troy Baker and Nolan North, the dynamic duo of video game voice acting to date. Welcome back to the Dirt Podcast by Donut Media. It's me, James Pumphrey, and as always, I'm joined by my handsome co-host, Nolan Sykes. Thank you, I'm flattered. It is race weekend, people. Toot toot! We got Jamie Chadwick on the line, coming all the way from Nevada. W Series champion, everybody. No need for an intro. Jamie, what is going on in the land of dice and desert lizards? Hey, James, how are you? Yeah, I'm in Nevada. It's super cool here. It's uh, obviously a little bit noisy, but it's the big race coming up this weekend, and honestly, I can't wait. Yeah, it sounds super noisy out there. Are you racing? No, no, sadly not. It's a rare weekend off for me, but yeah, I'm here supporting AJ, actually. I've heard he's going to be out practicing soon, so I might go try and sneak a little look at my camp. Oh, AJ, close personal friend of the show yeah. and myself. He came to my wedding. Don't mean to brag. <laughs> Their little bits of humorous banter seemingly serve as a breeder in between races instead of being one of the main driving forces to the career. You see what made DJ Atomica so iconic was his impact on the gameplay, while Dirt Podcast by Donut Media serves more as humorous satire. Over 9 hours of play, all they spoke about were two racers, AJ and Bruno Durant. Both happened to be the top racers in the Dirt series, but we never see their exploits, only hear about them. It's the classic case of show, not tell. Dirt 5 offers so much exposition on these two characters who don't impact it in any meaningful way till the end game. What starts as an exciting backdrop to the racing action only fades into obscurity the more you play. Where SSX got this DJ dynamic right was by having Atomica reference other racers that the player directly engaged with. He referenced new routes, hidden tips, and sometimes even your own character. Dude Podcast rarely mentions the main character during play, and the two they choose to discuss don't impact your play till the final hour of a 10 hour career mode. They're like corporal entities hunting the player's experience, and they shouldn't be. Here was the chance to recreate the excitement of yesteryear, with new likeable characters, new challenges, but instead, they dropped the ball on the final pass. There are no other notable races or characters to drive any rivalry of sorts. Not even your character has a physical form, it's all laughable really. That being said, this is still one of the best games I've played this year. Although not what it could have been, the podcast is still entertaining as hell, the music is memorable beyond belief, and the gameplay, though shallow, is still arguably one of the game's strongest aspects. This is a racing game after all, and so you'd expect that to be a major focus. Forgoing its traditional roots to serve as an arcade twin to the Dirt Rally series was a good move, similar to the relationship between Forza Horizon and Forza 7. Thanks to much more forgivable controls and easier AI, it serves that role quite well in fact. Whether you fancy it or not will depend on how you like your racing. For hardcore sim drivers, it may seem a tad bit too shallow due to the lack of mechanical damage after collisions and the AI's uncanny ability to rebound off walls while maintaining the same amount of speed and control. Sometimes they even seem to have some sort of rubber banding effect reminiscent of the Mario Kart series, especially after jumping. Those able to ignore such blemishes should find a sometimes frustrating yet fun experience under the hood. On the PC, the positives continue continue thanks to the possibility to use a myriad of control options. Using a race wheel, PS4 and Xbox pad as well as the keyboard is 
effortless. All were very responsive yet forgivable given the type of game that this is. The only noticeable control omission that I noticed was the lack of a rewind button. Oh, but that's more of a function than a control feature. A function that has become synonymous with Codemasters games. Even F1 2020 has it and that's arguably one of the most simulation focused games around. Not having it in an arcade game offers up quite a challenge in favour of some noticeable tedium. Gameplay aside, the rest of the game consists of simple, colourful neon menus and sliders. Every aspect is boiled down to their most basic so players can hop in and out of what they need with relative ease. This ease results in no v-sync, simple graphic settings, no tuning or the ability to change the language despite there being a sizable list of languages on the game's store page. There's also no open world exploration as the Forza Horizon series either. Instead, you have career mode, online, arcade, and the playground menus. Each menu allows you to select your race preferences, then jump directly into a race. The only real customization you have is the ability to design levels, set your profile card, and limited visual customization for your cars. Codemasters has stated that they'll be adding more PC options post-launch, so hopefully we'll see more positive improvements in a patch. How positive they'll actually be will depend on the publisher's ability to resist the urge to gouge the player for more more funds. At the time of writing, the game has no market transactions or items to purchase. However, its Steam page does list in-app purchases as a feature. What these will be is still yet to be seen, but anything more than improved audio, DLC levels, career content and car packs will be a net negative for the game. That improved audio mentioned being the most minor of these hopeful updates. Most of the audio is a perfect replication of the gas guzzling car enthusiasts love. It's one and only flaw being the less than audible sound effect for cars landing after a massive jump. It doesn't matter how good that fictional suspension is, no car should make such jumps then land with a lower audible tone than the engine makes on its first rev. As it stands, the game is a solid undertaking with enough content to keep players engaged for hours. All of it readily accessible via the game's simple progression system. Adding playground mode to the mix increases that playtime even further. This Trackmania-esque mode affords players the ability to create their own outrageous undertakings then share them with the world. The most creative among us will find more than enough to occupy them here while the rest of us get to play and rate their creations. Online and split screen were the only two modes I was sadly unable to test due to the sad reality that comes with playing games before release. If it's possible to do so post launch then we may revisit the game via a minor update of sorts to note any significant findings. Visually, this is a gorgeous title and easily one of the poster children for this new generation of gaming. Usually we recommend running mid-range PCs because the cost to benefit on those expensive setups aren't usually noticeable. This due to the undeniable fact that most PC players still use 1080p displays. On such a resolution, there's not much noticeable differentiation between a mid-range setup and high-end. Dirt 5 destroys that narrative. The game demands power. Yes, it's possible to run this on something like a GTX 1060, but the jump between that and something in the GTX 1080 range is astronomical. The game demands for advanced power. It's difficult to deny it. Thanks in parts to its advanced lighting, constant changes from day to night, dry to wet. It's a visual treat to the eyes. AMD couldn't have picked a better time to launch the ARX 6000 series of cards because this game is easily its biggest system seller. So with all of that to say so far about this game, here's my final verdict. One of the best aspects of sports games is their inherent ability to improve your musical taste. Tracks like the academic super like will cement themselves in your subconscious for life. If not, you're likely dead inside and probably won't enjoy Dirt 5's 70 plus routes across 10 beautifully rendered locations. If you do fancy the music then you're sure to find its previous gen sensibilities charming. Things like an honest progression system that doesn't rely on loot, 
things like its humorous career, these aren't common in modern games and as such, they come off as a novelty. With that, I think it's safe to say that we can recommend Dude 5 so long as future patches improve and not detach from it. Thank you very much for watching our review of Dirt 5. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to leave us a like and a comment in the comment section below to let us know what you think about the game. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll always know when we put up new content.